Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I am still in my echoey Airbnb, so I'm going to make this short. But welcome back because this is part two of my interview with Laura Fuentes, where we talk about how she nurtures her list, how she provides value to them, and how she sells to them. So without further ado, here we go. So let's go back now to your Mm -hmm. newsletter and to how you build a relationship and how you ultimately sell to people. Yeah. So, and what people, and if you're listening, like when you sell anything, like at some point in your blog, you may want to create like an ebook or a course or, but also I feel like selling includes when you work with a brand and maybe you're doing a promotion or a discount and they kind of can seem very forced and awkward to say, buy this or try this, right? For a lot of people. Um, And if that feels odd, you have to kind of rethink the relationship that you have with your audience, right? Which is what your original question was, is how do I really form that? And so when people come to my list... um, Wait, and I I just want to interrupt for one second. Definitely get on her list, (laughs) right? It's mamabowls.com, but that way people can get healthy meals, um, but also see how you do it, because I think you do it so well. Thank you. Um, yeah, either you go to my website, laurafuentes.com or mamabulls.com, you get the same onboarding experience. Um, so, and also, you know, like a lot of brands you get to, you, you think of this as a brand and I think of mamabulls as my food brand, but at the same time, people see my face all the time, right? It's Mm -hmm. a real person speaking behind the brand. And so, um, Uh, Most people think of growing their list as a way to send them the new blog content every week, right? Um, So somebody opts in, you offer some kind of freebie, and then you give them the freebie when they sign up, and then you send them the blog posts that are happening that week. But what you have to rethink is that that is a very automated and impersonal process. Um, I used to do it like that, and I learned that that really didn't build a relationship. It's almost, I felt like my job was to, once people opted in, was to send them a series of emails where they got to know me and what I'm all about. And then after that, after they kind of go like, okay, so she's got kids, she works, here's her most helpful content, here's her most best recipes, here's some downloadable freebies. After this series of emails, then I send them my weekly newsletter, okay? Mm-hmm. Because, um, and, and I, I just started doing that a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, um, and the relationship that I have with people, it's so much stronger than, um, because imagine like, you know, if you signed up this week, um, and you get my Sunday newsletter and I'm telling you how I just bombed this week or something or something. Right. Where you're like, what is she talking about? Right. right. Like, you don't even know that I have kids. You don't have like, you don't have right. a perspective of my life. So I created before I send them out my newsletter, I created a series of emails where people received some of my best content, the most helpful content, um, some free downloads. I sent them to my videos. So they got to. Um, see me and get to know me on video. And then I send them what's happening this week. Got it. So it's like a welcome series. Yes. It's and a how many series. emails in your welcome series? I believe there are nine. Okay. And do they come out once a week or? Um, they're timed. So that's why you're going to come to my session. Um, they are They are timed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're timed. And um, and um, I mean, still, I think we're still A-B testing, but basically it's like, the immediate download when you after you sign up, and then there's one another one that day, and then three two days later, and then three days later, and then five days later, and then at, at the day seven, and then day eleven or twelve, you know. So like they're staggered, right? Yep. So basically, it really imagine it as you and I just met, and then hey, let's go grab coffee. So we spend like. Um, or you and I, the first time we chat, we're at the coffee cart, right? And I'm like, oh, 
look, I got an extra coupon. Here's a dollar off of your coffee because I got an extra one. So you're like, oh, she's nice. She's helpful. That's your freebie, right? Yeah. And then while we're waiting for a coffee drink um, at the end of the bar, the barista, then you and I are like, oh, so you you would probably thank me for your call, for the coupon. And then I'm like, oh, so are, what are you doing here? Do you work around here? What's happening? You know, it's like kind of like get to know me. It's like, oh, well, if you, you're like, oh, I'm visiting. I'm like, oh, if you're visiting the area, then check out this restaurant. And that, right. That's me being helpful to you. Right. And yes. then after that is, um, is like, you know, uh, we move on to, oh, well, next time you're in town, let's grab coffee again. And you're like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm still here for a few more days. Awesome. We'll grab coffee again. I'm like, oh, do you want me to come to your event? So there's kind of the same way that you would naturally develop a friendship with someone that you click with, right? Um, I do that via email. Some things are helpful. Some things are freebies, tangible items. Kind of think of it as a coupon, even though I don't give out coupons, but it, they're tangible things that people can use right away. Um, but for the most part, and all of that, what that creates is them understanding what my life, what the content that I'll be sharing on my blog is all about. Right. And so, okay. So now I've gotten through your welcome series mm -hmm. and now I am in your weekly emails. Yeah. So talk to me about then how you, so you're sharing your content for the week, right. you're sharing about your life, mm -hmm. and then how do you sprinkle in, hey, if you're, if you're stuck figuring out what to pack for lunch or what to make for dinner, you can check out my um, meal, meal, plans. meal plans. Yeah. So and how often are you selling that? Gosh, not as often as I, as I should from a marketer's perspective, from some people's perspective, more often than I should. Um, <laughs> you know, you can't please everyone. Um, and so, and I think, so, okay, I'm going to answer your question and then I, I'm going to make a very important point on this. Um, the, the short answer is that now I have a sales series where I propose, I, it's almost like, here's the problem. It's like a sandwich. Here's the problem. Here is where you want to be and here's how you're going to get there, right? So, and my meal plan is the solution. So, um, and that could be, you know, you from a picky eater to, I mean, actually, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's a separate series of emails separate from that Sunday email. The, the, the Sunday email does mention the meal plans because I am a meal planning company and that is what, you know, optim like at the end of the day, like that's one of the products that I sell, right? Um, and I feel, and I feel super strongly about meal planning as being the solution to relieving stress in the kitchen, yes. to be feeling better about yourself because yes. of the foods that you eat and yes. feeling better as a parent because you are providing good nutrition, right? So honestly, I have no problem telling people that if you're not meal planning, if you are, you know, you, you really are doing yourself of any, of anything, like a disservice because being unprepared does not give you the opportunity to feel your best, right? Definitely. Um, and planning is the way to achieve whatever mealtime goals may be for you and your family. So honestly, I had to make a mind shift that it is, I feel so strongly about it for my family. Why not share that as much as I could, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so in the seven minute email, I do mention, you know, hey, this is what our meal plan people are going to be eating this week. If you want to grab the recipes, you can go here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of kind of give them a preview, but they have to buy a meal plan in order to get the five recipes, the done for you shopping list, the meal prep sheet. So you really do get a lot of value for two bucks a week or less, you know? Wow. Yeah. Um, so I kind of had to get out of my mind that quote, I was selling, I am not selling. I am being helpful. Yes. It's just that planned help costs money. You can yep. DIY yourself a remodel of your house on Pinterest, or you can hire somebody like an interior designer to cut the work for you. I like that. So, um, so I'm quote, I don't, I don't feel like I'm selling, but of course there's people on my list who are like, I can't, if you just, I just want your free content. So you could just stop selling me. And I'm like, okay, well then you need to unsubscribe because I do sell a product. 
that helps thousands of families. So if it's not helpful for you, you can come to my, my website. Of course, I don't say these things, but you have to be prepared to not be liked by everyone. Yes. That's okay. Yes. Yes. And there are people who, who do expect your content for free. And that's okay, but not in my newsletter. You know, yes. like it costs a lot of time, effort, and manpower and intention for me to sit down and build these, this, the content and create the video. And it's totally fine that you, people are sitting on my newsletter for free for years. And I literally have people that email me and go, gosh, I've been on your newsletter for X amount of time, some of them years. And they're like, I've never bought a product. Is there a way I can send you money? Oh. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like you just made my day because you're, you know, I'm, and I say to them, I was like, you know what? It's really my honor to have somebody that's like-minded. All I ask yes. is that if you find my content helpful, share it with your share friends it. online. Yes. So it's really not about selling. It's really, for me, it's always been about creating that relationship and having people understand that I feel super strongly about meal planning and hopefully they'll give me the opportunity to do that for them and their family. Right. Well, the truth is that you can draw a line from meal planning to love, to love of your family, to love of yourself, to living a better life. Yeah. Like what could be better? Yeah. I mean, in meals, the reality is that meals is something that's very stressful for a lot of people. And I don't understand sometimes how people come to my list and they tell me that they're just it is the most stressful meal of the day. They don't know what to make. They go through the drive through more often than they should. Like there's all these things that they, at the end of the day, they're telling me even in their own words and point blank that they don't think they're doing a good job. Hmm. And I'm like, here's a solution for you. And they don't buy it. And I'm not sure why. Like we're just so stubborn about accepting help. And at $2 or less a week, that is, that sometimes I'm like, if what you're doing is not working, you have to change something, right. you right. know? And the only reason I have, I look online, like I have it together is because I plan to death and not because it's my job to plan. It's because it's the only way that I can make sure that I personally eat good for me food, that my family eats good food and that I can actually make it happen when we get home from karate at 6.45 or 7.15 at night and my family is starving. So it's really easy to go through Chick-fil-A or something like that on a Wednesday night when we get, when we get home at 7.15 or right. I can say, you know what? I have something in the slow cooker or, all I or I already made the meal yesterday with leftovers. All I got to do is heat it up. Yep. You know, so I, I would say that one thing you've been able to leverage is the fact that you are a planner. So you're able to say, let me be the planner because that comes naturally to me. And let's say you're a mom who's not a good planner. I can give you a little bit of extra planning. Like I, I'm providing that service for somebody who might not be able to get it together. Right. And I, I would go a little bit further to say that, and if I looked at me, I, I've learned to plan because I was not good at it. Interesting. What I'm really I would have thought good you were a natural executing. planner. I'm a really good executioner. Like if I have a plan, I can execute like no other, right? Okay. I can also wing it because now it's my job and I'm confident in the kitchen and I look at the ingredients in my fridge and I'm like, you know what? I can make something out of nothing. And when in doubt, when in doubt is breakfast for dinner, right? Right. But at the beginning you know, the, I had to learn myself as well. Right. And I created a process, which is what I sell. It's the process of doing that for any family. That's great. So let's talk about, so you, you said that you have these funnels to help then sell your meal plans. Mm -hmm. And can you explain what that means? Right. So I think oftentimes we hear the word sales funnel and we think of it as like this sleazy marketing way of like some funnel that all these people go to the top and then they kind of go down. Right. It's really not like that. Um, the way we do it, um, it's really about understanding that not everyone is going to open every email that you send. And so therefore, 
they, you know, while you feel like, gosh, if I send them an email about my product every week, they're going to be like, I mean, of course, there's a right way of crafting this email with email copy. But the point is, is that the reality is that they're probably not opening that email. They're opening one out of every four emails that you're sending out, right? And in, in people read information differently. So in my funnel, I say, I call it funnel, but it's really a series okay. because it's linear more than, it's not like buy the small product and then the next natural fit is to buy the more expensive one. Like for me is a continuous introduction and education about the products and services that I have to offer that help them in an area of their life. So beyond okay. meal plans, we also have like other programs, like we have a picky eaters course, um, that's super successful. Um, we have a, um, we have a course on, you know, budgeting and meal planning. It's kind of like meal planning one-on-one, how to do okay. it on a budget. This is like when people don't buy meal plans and because they want to do it themselves, but don't know how budgetize helps them learn to meal plan, how, learn how to shop for their food, how to make everything really cost effective. And then the other program that we also launched this year, um, is called kickstart family kickstart, which is, um, really helping families like reset the way they eat is mm. kind of like whole 30. But what I observed when I did whole 30, gosh, like four years ago is that the whole 30 community of moms, like they're super successful. They feel great when they do it, but they're not taking their families along for the whole 30 journey. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're making multiple meals. And by week three, you're feeling great, but then you're not feeling so great when you look at the table and you're looking at the meals that you're, the rest of your family is eating because you know what you're eating is so much better, right? So then it's almost like your mom guilt sets in. And this was happening with a lot of community members of mine that were using our meal plans for most of their families, but then they were also cooking themselves this very strict Whole30 meal and they were feeling great, but uh, physically, but not so great emotionally because they felt, gosh, I could do so much better, right? Um, and so that's kind of like what we tried to solve with Family Kickstart and we have hundreds of families that did it this year um, to take the entire family on a journey to cut out sugar, cut out processed foods, learn to try new things, you know, all the principles that I kind of talk about and everything else, but kind of like more of a full family approach. So Ooh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So whether it's programs, meal plans, um, you know, it's really about knowing, figuring out that not everyone knows all that I do. So my funnel is really more of a series that educates them of what's possible and mm. how to get there. Mm. And what are you most excited about right now that you're building, that you're selling, that you're, you know, what are you most proud of? You know, okay, so what I'm most proud of is the fact that I've been able to take my real life and I'm still living my life as is, um, and I'm able to share that with like-minded people and that I'm able to provide for my family. Like my, my, my business is my family's livelihood. Uh, my husband now works with me uh, for the last two, almost two years now. He quit wow. his corporate job. He was um, in healthcare for 15 years. And this is what we do. And I don't think I would be able to do what I, or be as successful at it there's so much room to grow and change and improve. But thus far, I feel like I've done really well because I've stuck to what I believe is true for me and my family, right? And I'm trying to find in my customers and the people in my community are like-minded families. Um, so that's really what I'm most proud of. I've, I've grown, my business has grown. I've been on television. I've had all these opportunities. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm still me. I go out without makeup. I, you know, I don't document everything. Um, you know, I just, and I feel really good about the lifestyle that I've created, even though it's not perfect. It's the perfect lifestyle for my family. So if you were, if I am a blogger just starting out or I want to blog and, and start a business, what advice would you have for me? Create a plan for the vision that you see for yourself. 
Explain what you mean. So we all have goals, but like the first thing is to create, you know, build that vision. Like what is it that you want to do? Dream. It's not just about dreaming, but fill in the color, like make it real. Make, paint that picture in your mind day in and day out. And then plan it out how you're going to get there. What are you going to, do you need to invest in courses? Is there are things that you need to learn that quite frankly, for free on the internet, it's not going to cut it. You know, like I've invested thousands in courses to learn things for online marketing and, you know, make yourself the best version of yourself so that you can really propel your own growth. Right. Um, I just, you know, like, and that's why I say paint a picture, create a vision, and then build a plan on how you're going to get there. Because if you have a plan, you can then execute it. Sometimes it takes longer than other times, but you can execute it, you know? And Planning who, what, is huge. Who, who have you learned from the most, would you say? Um, when I first, okay, so it's been like an evolution. So when I first started back in 2013, everybody knows who Marie Forleo is. Yep. Yeah. Um, I took B school back in 2012, 13, um, like one of the earlier versions of B school. And I kind of learned a lot from there um, mm -hmm. at the time, which is now like that early version of B school is so outdated, which is great that Marie updates it. So that's really a great investment if you want to take your blog into a business level. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to learn how to kind of like grow your blog and use, um, if you're a food blogger, I think Food Blogger Pro is really good. It's um, by uh, Pinch of Yum couple. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, um, that Bjorn. was Bjorn. Yeah, Bjork. Bjork. Sorry, Bjork. He's, yeah, yes. they are I love phenomenal. Him. Um, your podcast is a great resource. I just think that people need to sit down and learn, seek out the information that you know you're not best at. And um, I've learned, I read a, a book or two a month. So one to two a month is my kind of good rate um, mm. on the areas that are my weaknesses. So um, I'm in business so that I can get better and see a different perspective. Um, are there any you can recommend? Um, well, I've recently read a ton of how to be a better boss type of books okay. because I need to, <laughs> I've been hiring, um, I've been hiring, um, I've been in the hiring process and it's very, very difficult to, um, hire the, where I'm at. Um, a book that I really love is the go-giver. Ooh, okay. It's um, the Go Giver is by um, Bob Berg and John Mann, and um, to in fairness, I recently read it. My uh, my friend Alice Chase she gave it to me because um, mm -hmm. it really puts you in a how to succeed from a giving mindset. I love that. And you know, she, her and I got to talk about you know we met at a conference recently and. You know, we, her and I, are the both the type of people that will give people five minutes, but never like an hour of our time unless we really kind of click and connect. And um, she's like, "Gosh, I have an extra copy of this book." You, her, she sent her husband to go get this book and give it to me. She says, "You are everything that this book talks about." And I was like, "Really?" And um, and I read it, and now it's a book that I've actually given like probably five or six copies recently in the last wow. three months. Wow, I will so, check it out. Yes, the Go Giver. Okay. And it will really change your, it's like mind shift of um, how to really live your life. But really for me, it was like how to position your blog and the role of giving, right? Yes. Um, of course, I feel like Gary Vaynerchuk really yeah, is him. like my spirit animal in a way. Yes. Yes. Um, if I've had a bad day, I just, I have him on my podcast and I really like listen to, it's really about like getting that push, you know, the courage, like almost like, okay, go get him. Right. And right. I'm like, oh, okay. Right. He, he's got me. Right. When, if I'm feeling right. a little low, there are a lot right. of low days. I can kind of scroll right. and find one. Right. Um, 
I feel like I've also learned a ton from um, Amy Porterfield. Yeah, she has I a like great her. podcast. Yep. Um, so Amy Porterfield is really, really good. I've learned a ton. I've purchased a, quite a few of Derek Halpern's courses. Mm-hmm. He's socialtriggers.com. Mm-hmm. His courses are second to none. Um, they're, mm-hmm. you know, and all. And then I also really like um, Lewis House School of Greatness. Before he was huge, uh, I've learned, you know, he's got some really great content. Um, oh my gosh, wait, I have to tell you about this one more. I'm sorry I'm taking so much of your time, but no, I really like, please. I, um, I, I really love, inf- I love learning and making myself better. And uh, five, four, three, two, one. There is a, um, a woman, her name is Mel Robbins. Okay. And melrobbins.com. She has a book and, but she has a, she's actually a great, she's, you'll love her in Lewis's house podcast. So you might want to put this in the show notes. The five, I will be putting all of these. Yes. The five second rule. She's also on YouTube. Um, but she wrote this, she's written this book about how sometimes, you know, you want to do things and you just don't know how, like there, there are five crucial seconds to just get up and do it right and Mm. it's if you go if you basically count yourself down five four three two one and it's like a rocket launch like you literally just like there's no nothing to think about you just count yourself down and go do it whatever it is and Jillian when I'm telling you that I use that to get up at 4 30 two mornings a week to go work out for a 5 a.m workout I'm like uh, okay. Oh. And I envision that in my head. And by the time I get to one, I'm out of bed. Right. Wow. So I use that and it's so powerful. Her, it's just a great resource. So clearly like I find learning and inspiration from everywhere. Um, and it's always like you kind of said a few minutes ago, it's to fill a hole or a need in your life right now. Right. And those are the things that make us better. Right. Right. And I think the the willingness to learn says a lot. Uh, I think that people can feel that in your business. Oh, that, thank you. That, you know, you're always challenging yourself. And I feel that in oh. your content. It's Absolutely. just that, you know, if not, we remain stagnant, right? I, I If you remain stagnant, like, that's, you're going to stay where you're at forever, right? I, I don't want to do that. I want my life to be exciting to me, to live it every day. And if I stay the same way as I was, then it's really not that exciting. <laughs> I so agree. So, Laura, this has been wonderful. <sighs> it, where can people reach out to you, learn more about you, um, connect? Okay. So you want to connect with me unscripted, just what it is that's happening. Instagram is a great place, Laura S. Fuentes. I do manage my own Instagram um, and that's just really a great place for you people to see, well, shoot, she really does like jump on a plane on a whatever note is, you know, or she does the things. Um, so I love Instagram for that. You can, of course, go to laurafuentes.com and um, find about more about me there. And then, you know, Mamables, like really laurafuentes.com is really a great hub for all the things lifestyle and momables i will be launching a business site really soon to Ooh, what yeah okay. so i will be launching laurafuentes.co which is like the company um yep. of laura and because i for years people are like how is it that you do it walk me through the steps how you know and i feel like on my personal blog it's really the lifestyle of living a fresh life but not the business side of my life right So um, that's something that I'm excited to kind of develop more this year. That's wonderful. Well, Laura, truly, I I thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, my pleasure. I had a great time. And if I can be a resource to anyone that's listening, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, great. And I always learn so much from you. Thank you. Are you trying to grow your social media followers and email subscribers? Well, if you've got two minutes, I've got a product for you. It's Milo Tree. Milo Tree is a smart pop up slider that you install on your site and it pops up and asks your visitors to follow you on Instagram, Facebook, 
YouTube, Pinterest, or subscribe to your list. It takes two minutes to install. We offer a WordPress plugin or a simple line of code, and it's Google friendly on mobile and desktop. So we know where your traffic is coming from. We show a Google friendly pop-up on desktop and a smaller Google friendly pop-up on mobile. Check it out, sign up today and get your first 30 days free. Thank you.